Ladies and gentlemen, the troopers around the world, welcome back to a Battlefield 6 settings guide. We are going to go over the settings you need to set as soon as you launch the game, so you'll be ready. So right when you launch the game, you're going to have this. Let's assume you hit default on everything. Turn off menu narration probably, because that's going to be real annoying, unless you're handicapped or something. We're just going to finish here. We're going to go into the actual game and change the settings from there. The main menu. So let's go through everything. Menu narration off. Subtitles, your choice, on or off. Master volume, you can tweak this as you go, but you'll probably want to turn down music at some point. Camera effects. You can go ahead and shut all this motion blur off right here. Probably get rid of this. Camera shake off. Reduce sprint camera bobbing. Keep that off. This one, personal preference. Controls, hold toggle, controls, toggle, just to keep it simple, whatever you prefer. Double tap forward to sprint. I don't usually do that. Vehicle boost, toggle, crouch slide all. Double crouch for sprint slide on. Infantry weapon zoom, hold, hold, hold. That's fine. Interact, prioritize, interact, good. If you want to prioritize reloading your gun, of course, that kind of makes sense. So you could set one to tap and one to hold. That would be an option there. If you want to hold interact, you could do that, or you could just toggle it. Skip revive. I thought it might increase the time that it gets you to die when you're down on the ground, but it doesn't actually change the time that it takes, so you might just want to leave that one on hold, just so that you can cancel if you need to. Request revive, toggle. Mount break instant, of course, that's important. I like to have the scoreboard on hold. I don't use a controller, so I won't go over those settings here, but it might be nice to use a controller for certain vehicles. If you like to fly jet or a helicopter with a controller, it might actually be easier, so I might recommend that. I might test it at some point. If we do, we'll make another video on that. Tutorials, you can leave these on for now if you want to see them, but you can also just toggle them off if you're a veteran FPS player. It doesn't matter. Maybe have some hints on for now just to see what things do. Not a bad idea. Looks like the vault hint though is off by default, but if you've played any game before where you vault over objects, you probably don't need that. Gameplay. Invert all vertical look. For me, I always have flight controls inverted. I think that should be a default. I don't know why it's not in most games. We'll get to that. But for look, it doesn't really matter. That's just a personal preference. Here's the sensitivity settings. Probably adjust this depending on what you're used to. You can see it even gives you the 360 degree rotation information there. I've never used that before, but if you're a veteran FPS player with lots of different games and you might want to copy your settings from one to the other. For me, about 800 DPI is usually what I want. However, since I upgraded to 1440 resolution from 1080, my DPI is now 1050 and I'm just going to leave the default sensitivity. You can adjust that whenever you want as you go, test things out, see what you like. You typically want to have a lower sensitivity to aim so that you can track motion more easily, make those fine tuned adjustments. However, in a fast paced game like Battlefield, it might make sense to increase your sensitivity a bit just so you can flip around 180 degrees real easily make sure you have your sensitive behind it double top force like I said I don't like to do this do so I'm gonna leave that off crouch toggle sprint for me I'm gonna keep it on stand vault over sprint so you can choose whether vaulting is prioritized over sprinting typically you want to have that on so you will always vault over objects all these other ones are all personal preference obviously parachute auto deploy you can leave this on default for now Typically, I would want this to be manual, but it doesn't look like there's an option here. It just says always auto deploy or tethered. Tethered to a squad in game mode insertions. So that's kind of a weird setting. I'm not sure what that means. Roll camera and landing mode on. So in Battlefield 6, when you take a far fall, you're going to roll, do a somersault, and the camera's going to roll with you. You can turn that off if you find it annoying. I'll probably just leave it alone for now, but it can be a little bit jarring and disorienting. It's up to you if you want to disable that. For mounting guns, I would say leave these on instant. Everything else is personal preference. If you like to have double tapping, you can do that, but not for me. Peak type, side and up. There's a few options here. Leave everything on. Interact and reload, like I mentioned before. I think we already went over this. Invert demolition charge, depending on what you prefer on your keybinds for throwing and detonating C4s and stuff like that. Vehicles. So these I would just leave alone until you figure out what you want. You might want to adjust your sensitivity in certain aircrafts and helicopters, so that's up to you. Personal preference. Leave it as default for now. Aim assist. So this is probably just gonna to apply to controller players, I assume. Yeah, controller stick aim. Okay, so we don't need to worry about this for now. If we ever go over controllers at some point down the road, we'll talk about it. Campaign, your choice on the difficulty, obviously. Everything else, I can think we can leave here as default. Controller, we're skipping. Mouse and keyboard. Okay, control settings. Uniform infantry I mean, leave this on default. Obviously, field of view, here we go. I would recommend the maximum here is 120, the lowest is 85. Now, if you set this too high, obviously you can see more and you can really be be aware of everything that's going on around you. However, enemies in the mid range and far range will be extremely small. So I don't recommend 
max that out typically I would say around 100 to 110 would be kind of where you want it I will start off at 110 and see how things go infantry spirit click that's my preference we talked about this stuff already steady scope hold that's how I prefer it too you're gonna hold down shift to keep your sniper scope steady and that's how I would prefer to do it and you can adjust these later on if you wish we already went over these types of settings before but this is just specific to the keyboard and mouse of course if you want to change anything feel free infantry passenger keybind so this is going to show you all the keybinds for mouse and keyboard you can set them however you wish right now it looks like there's a lot of keybinds that are actually missing for example we don't have a scoreboard so i probably would want to set that but if you see here when i press tab to pull my scoreboard it's going to say social menu so do you want to change the binding for now no maybe the social menu is the scoreboard toggle inventory it's not showing here you don't really use an inventory in battlefield typically so Maybe this is for the battle royale mode. Change seat and vehicle. F keys to your different seats, which is the best way to do it, easiest way to do it. Ping is gonna be Q in this game by default. If you're in infantry or in a vehicle or whatever, this is gonna be what you need to press to ping enemies. If you're in a recon or sniper scope, you're not gonna to need to do this. So just keep that in mind. Standard keybinds, WASD. Press jump, quick upgrade is hold. Vault is also spacebar, so these bindings are shared. Keep that in mind by default. It would probably prioritize vault over jump. If we keep those settings on default, and you can change them if you wish. You might want to separate these keybinds like you would do in a game such as PUBG. It might be best to set alt or control to, to vault. Shift is going to be your sprint. Crouch is left control by default. If you want to just toggle the crouch, you can press C for now. Hold is control. So one of these is going to cause you to slide. Both of them by default will. If you tap them, prone is Z, parachute space. We don't have a lean peaks keybind, which is interesting. It looks like there's only a single binding for lean and peak, so it's not gonna be left and right like you would typically have in other games. Weapons and equipment, obviously you're gonna fire with your mouse. Reload is R, of course. Melee takedown F, primary weapons one through armor is gonna be five. Gadgets three and four, of course. You can also have these on the mouse, which is a good idea. By default, it's already set, which is great. Night vision goggles is seven. Grenades are G and your flashlight is gonna be on T as well as your laser. Like I mentioned before, steady scope is shift. Toggle scope is V if you have multiple scopes. And there you go. F is gonna be your default bi bipod. Now, like I said, you're gonna to need to adjust these as you go. Control settings for vehicles. Here's your options here. I recommend turning this on from the beta. We're gonna test this again, but in the beta, it felt a lot less heavy to keep automatic hover on so that you just float there when you're not pressing up or down. When you don't put any input, you should just be hovering, right? So let's turn that on. Vert vertical flight aircraft, it's already set for us, which is great. Maybe that's a fix from the beta because I remember in the beta, it wasn't inverted by default. So hopefully we'll test this and make sure this is right, but I believe that should be on. If you like to have flight with inverted controls, Aim, uniform vehicle aiming. So if you wanna lock in your muscle memory, you might wanna enable this. These are all gonna be personal preferences like your sensitivity settings. You probably don't wanna invert any of the ground vehicles such as the gunners and drivers. Third person vehicle, field of view. Okay, let's max this one out, guys. I wish we could go even higher. It looks like 83 is the max, but we wanna max that out completely. Vehicle boost toggle, just like when you're sprinting on ground, that's normal. Right click is gonna be your zoom. For any vehicle you're in, just keep that in mind. Round and vehicle driver keybinds, here we go. So exit and enter vehicle is gonna be E, big map, quick loadout customization Y, interesting. So if you need to swap something with your vehicle customization, that's an option here. Maybe you can actually swap your customization. Maybe if you're in the main base or maybe if you're at an ammo depot, you can adjust there. Swapping seats, WSD. Your mouse is obviously gonna control your aiming. Pretty typical boost. Handbrake is Z in this game, interesting. So if you're trying to slide around in the Hummer, maybe you wanna keep that one in mind. Lock turret V. Swapping weapons is gonna be F, but you can also just use the number keys and activate your equipment slots with three and four, while your primary and secondary weapons are gonna be one and two. Transfer vehicle keybinds. So there's transfer vehicles in this game, maybe a Black Hawk helicopter. We'll have to see maybe a boat troop transport on the ground, but there's not gonna to be too much there, I imagine. You just have your default settings. Aircraft pilot, here we go. So this is all gonna be normal. We already swapped the invert version, so that's all you really need. But if you wanna see any of the settings here, you can free look, you can roll left, right, Pitch, left, right, yaw, left, right, A and D are yaw by default. W and S are throttle up and down. Huh, so we already set the vehicles to fly inverted. But in case that didn't work or you'd prefer to do it manually, I'll show you how to do that now. We want pitch up to be mouse down. It's gonna override a lot of settings here, bind anyway. And we want pitch down to be mouse up. Our flight settings should be correct. Roll with the mouse as well, that's what we want. And then our firing keys are the same. Everything should be fine. If you want to zoom, you right click. Free look is going to be V with the aircraft. Your afterburners can be shift. 
Then all your slots are one through four. I don't see a flare button. Maybe that's gonna be one of your equipment slots. Now let's go to helicopter and do the same thing. We're probably gonna to have to invert our mouse. Controls there, yeah, pitch down. We want that to go up. To invert properly, pitch up. We're gonna have that go down. Everything else looks good. Moving on. Gunner keybinds are gonna be pretty standard. Reload, nothing we need to change here, I don't think. Just firing, swapping weapons, two and three. UI keybinds, okay. So these are your UI keybinds. Scoreboard's gonna be holding tab. Map is M, chat is enter. If you wanna do team chat channel, you can press K. Push to talk by default is caps. And different party channels, you can just set them to whatever you wish. If you wanna clear pings, press T. If you wanna ping something, obviously I mentioned before, press Q. Inventory request, it's G by default. But I think that's it for the keybinds. Mouse raw input, typically you want this on to have your desktop settings be prioritized here. Graphics, graphics quality auto, we probably are going to want to adjust the graphics quality. We'll leave it on auto for now. But let's see what we've got here. Graphics quality settings, here's the important one. So depending on your frame rate, depending on your PC setup, these are all gonna change, right? Yeah, see everything by default for me is on ultra and high, even though I only have a 3080 Ti graphics card, which is pretty decent. It's just, you know, it's a couple generations behind. We probably are gonna have to adjust some of these. I like to keep texture settings higher, but we probably don't need ultra. We can probably bring these down a bit, especially since I'm gonna be capturing content, creating, I probably need that frame rate to improve a little bit. It just depends, you can test it out and see what it's like, but for some of these things, lighting qualities, we can probably lower shadow qualities. Well, it's lower high, so let's leave it on high for now. Reflection quality, probably put that on medium. Green space reflections, looks like high and low and off are the only options, so we'll leave those alone for now. But you can check your video memory and how much you're gonna be utilizing here and go from there. Post processing obviously is nice to have that on higher setting. So here's an option, screen space, AO, and GI. So this is ambient occlusion and global illumination. We probably can, yeah, we'll gain some value there by lowering that setting. High fidelity objects amount. I'm just gonna switch everything from ultra to high for now and see how that goes for my setup but you can do what you want and mess with these settings as you see fit. Advanced. All right, so here's some of your important settings. Fixed scale resolution, you probably wanna leave that on 100 to match your display resolution. Flame rate limiter, definitely don't turn that on. Dynamic resolution scale, actually that is independent of DLSS. I recommend leaving this on enabled or enabled plus boost always in most games. Upscaling technique, if you want to use DLSS, here we go. So DLSS is typically what you could use. You could also use FSR depending on what you wanna to do to increase your frame rate. I'll go with that and leave this on quality. If we need to switch to balanced, we can do that or even performance, but that usually is gonna look pretty whack. So let's do quality for now. AMD frame generation. Now this is an interesting setting because this will definitely give you what appears to be more frames and will run smoother. However, you will oftentimes find that with these frame generation, things you're gonna have other problems such as input delay or something else there, right? It's not always gonna be exactly what you hope using the AI tech but I found this has been working in the beta for me. This actually helped quite a bit with my frame rate. So for now, I'm gonna leave it on. If we have any issues, we're gonna test with it off as well and see how that goes. Future frame rendering, personal preference, like I mentioned before with the input delay, with these settings off, the game responds more quickly to input, but visual performance would be great. So you can test that. I'm gonna leave that off for now. Performance overlay, probably wanna keep that on just to test. If we leave it on simple, we just see frame rate probably. And then if we put it on extra, we can see all the settings, how the CPU is, threading and all that stuff. But for now, we'll put on simple. So that covers all the graphics settings, except we already talked about field of view a little bit. We've already fixed these problems. Weapon field of view, definitely keep this on wide to make our weapon a little bit smaller and out of the way. Getting rid of motion blur and camera shake. If you like any of these things, you can turn them on or off. It depends on how you like your visuals. We'll test these in game. Once we get in game, adjust them as needed. Typically, I would want these all off, to be honest. I don't know why they're on by default. That's a bit odd. Full screen mode. It might be difficult to alt tab if you leave it on. So some people might like borderless if they're switching between windows. For me, full screen is fine. Default resolution. Refresh rate to match your monitor if you can. Vertical sync, always off, guys. If you're playing a single player game, you can turn this on if you're worried about screen tearing. I've never had that problem. Vertical sync, always off to avoid input delay. That's just a must in any competitive online game, right? I don't know why there's other options. One half and one quarter and one third, but leave it off. Show the HUD, of course, we're gonna leave that on. Now let's turn off the HUD motion. We wanna keep those steady if possible. Probably wanna see our, our friendly soldiers. There should be color settings somewhere for that. Maybe it's under advanced HUD settings here. Okay, view distance on foot and on ground. That, that's definitely a setting that's gonna be important. So let's quickly go through all these. Minimap size, 
Medium, I prefer larger mini maps typically, but we'll try medium for now. We'll have to test this out and see what all this means, but view rotation. I like to keep mine solid so we have north facing north at all times. Some people like to rotate with their player, me not so much, so I'm turning that off. View distance on foot, we wanna see a medium there and we wanna have the highest in the air and on ground vehicles and air vehicles, we'll, we'll wanna have the largest view of the mini map. So we're gonna put this on 250 for infantry for now and then 300 on the other two, just to see more distance when we're moving faster. Resources gained, maybe that means when you get reloaded, so you might wanna turn that on, but I'm not sure about these settings for now, we don't need to worry about it. So here's the colors for the different HUDs. You can definitely play with those if you like to. I'm gonna leave them on default for now, but we might come back to that later. Icons and indicators, if you have trouble seeing anything, you might want to crank this up for icon intensity. I'm gonna leave it on default. Crosshairs and indicators, you can change your colors. Might be a good idea for those of you if you have colorblind issues, anything like that, or you just like to have things more clear, there's probably an optimal way to do this, and we'll probably go over that at a future time. But you can change your crosshair. For me, I typically like to have my crosshair color be something kind of bright, not white. If you have it on white, you can see on the snow one, it's gonna be difficult to see. Well, I'm gonna set my crosshair color to teal for now. Maybe we'll try magenta. That's also a good one too. Everyone has their own personal preference here, right? Crosshair thickness. There are also probably different crosshair options as well. I prefer just a dot typically. Let's see what the options are here, thin. Default, okay, so th this is just the dot. It's not affecting anything else. These lines here are gonna indicate the spread. If you're moving, if you're holding down the fire for too long there, it's gonna expand and show you that your bullets aren't gonna be in a very tight spread. Shot visibility, you can change it to always probably or hide. It's up to you what you want your chat settings to be. Audio settings, here we go. Eventually you're gonna wanna just crank this all the way off, but for now, the game's brand new. I might leave it on for now, just li listen to the music. And you probably can turn some of these other settings down, the VOs and the UI sound effects. Hit Indicator is important, obviously, when you hit someone so you know that you connected your shot. Sound systems, there's a lot of them. You might want to consider swapping this to headphones. Someone who's like an audio expert will go over the best options here eventually, so you can also pick your mix of preferred sound types. I'm going to leave on default for now. Enable voice chat, we'll see how that goes. We might have to turn that off, but for now, we'll let it go. Like I mentioned before, caps lock is going to be your default button there. Tinnitus, SF volume, if you have tinnitus problems, or if you want to save your ears from getting tinnitus, probably a good idea to get rid of this. This is going to affect things like flashbangs. You want to turn that down if you don't want to have your ears get wrecked by that kind of sound, right? And I don't know about really frequency. You'd probably have to be an audio expert to understand that one. Let's leave it alone for now. All right, system settings. I don't think we need to do anything here. If you're a streamer, if you want to be anonymous, etc., you can do that. Since I am, well, I'm not a big streamer, so I don't really care, right? We're going to leave that alone. You can show your network share you probably want to have your stats shown so you can make sure your network's settings are working for the rest of this doesn't really matter mini map settings actually all those settings we've gone over before extras nothing here there you go guys that's going to be your starter settings hopefully that helped there's obviously stuff we didn't cover yet that we need to find two more but we'll come back to this in a more detailed guide later on now you're ready to lock and load into the game you're ready to play see you out there on the battlefield